Hey there, everybody, how's it going? So today is the day I talk about Duolingo. For those of you new here, new to my channel, I somehow became that Duolingo guy just because I happened to make a video about learning German just by using this app. It was effective, I am conversationally fluent, I've made previous videos about that in the past, and I do consider myself to be a bit of an authority in the space, mostly because I do have a six year streak, coming up on at least, 2,120 days, I use the app quite extensively, I've taught myself German, and now for the last two years, I have been teaching myself Spanish. Is it effective? What are the best strategies that you can use to actually learn how to win at leagues? This is the video for you, okay? Bienvenidos, willkommen, subscribe. That's danglish, but you subscribe to my channel if you're new here, hey. All right, so first off, a question I get asked a lot is, is Duolingo still an effective language learning tool? Easy answer, yes. <laughs> it, it's worked for me quite well. Like, I am the only person I can really base this off of, and from my personal experience, yes, it's been incredibly effective. For my Spanish so far, very, very good. I've definitely surpassed what I was taught in high school at this point, and I'm learning new things, and it's sticky. The German that I learned from Duo and everything after that, also very effective. I finished reading Harry Potter the entire series now in German, so like, I know that that has been very effective. Now, you might see some YouTube videos online from other people that have used the app for a couple days, and those language YouTubers, they go, oh, it's not a really good app. You definitely don't wanna use it. Instead though, they always end up promoting some weird paid for service that they themselves have created or they're sponsored by. Funny that, but I'm always someone that's a huge fan of self-betterment, especially when it comes at no cost. I do think that learning is, uh, is f should be free, and the fact that Duolingo is still a free app is why I still rep them quite a lot, and I do recommend them. No matter what your strategy is for learning a language, as long as you stay to it and you're consistent, that's really all that matters. Am I gonna say that using this free app during your lunch breaks or commuting to work like I did are going to be as effective as taking a four time a week intensive course that costs 600 pounds? Probably not, probably not, but if you're someone that just wants to fill that time in between your day and learn a language to be productive, it, that, this is for you. You can duo it. <laughs> Cringing at my own jokes, Ugh. Now I know I need to address the owl in the room, uh, but the app isn't perfect, okay? It's not like it's the best app in the world. It's just an effective tool for what you make of it, okay? A, a good artist doesn't blame his tools. He blames his hatred of his imperfections. But when it comes to the app, especially if you're learning some of their flagship languages like German, English, Spanish, French, Italians getting up there, you're gonna have a good time. They're, they're really fleshed out language trees. They've got podcast stories galore. It's quite good. Whereas if you're going for some of the Eastern languages, not quite there yet, the Japanese, the Korean, but even though they're not as fleshed out, I would still recommend, especially if you're from these cultures, Navajo, Hawaiian, Welsh, Irish, like they're, they're making me so happy that they have these available as a free resource to learn languages that I, should not be dying in the slightest, okay? Language death is a very uh, sad thing to me. And so, hey, if you want, pick up those. They're actually pretty effective. I know a friend of mine who taught himself Irish on the app and he's from Ireland. That makes me so freaking happy. But hey, I know why you're here. Strategies, okay? What is the best strategy to use on Duolingo? That really depends on what you want from the app. Do you want to learn a foreign language? or do you want to progress in the leagues? Very different things, very different strategies. So hey, you wanna learn more of a language on the app. Okay, my best strategy is still the cascading method I talked about previously. This is a method in which instead of just learning one lesson at a time or speeding on through, you waterfall down the tree, keeping multiple alive at the same time, and then slowly going through recursively and really instilling that stuff in your mind so that you're less likely to forget it. Now, I've had friends that have rushed through their tree and they've leveled up everything to level one and then tried to go back. You forget so much. You're now so far and you're like advanced, but at a very elementary level advanced. And so when you go back, your memory isn't going to be as good. Also, I don't really recommend getting every single lesson up to level five or the purple one or crowning. Like, don't do that before moving forward. Instead, like I said, try out this cascading method if you haven't yet in which you have, I like the number five, my favorite number. Go for five level fours, five level threes, five level twos, five level ones, and then whatever, however many, like one, two, or three uh, introductory ones that you can. And then as you level up one into another one, you make sure you always have five available of each. This really helps that you're constantly going back through and really remember the stuff. It stays sticky in your noggin. I think one of the biggest things people struggle with with this app is consistency. You might have a day in which you're really motivated. You're gonna learn a lot of the language and you do like 100, 200, 300 XP in a day. 
and then the next day you're kind of exhausted, you get a bit too fatigued. That's not the way to best do this app. The best way to really learn a language using this method is consistency. Even if it's just 15 minutes a day, just logging on, doing a lesson or two, making sure that you're there and getting that language a little bit more in your brain. Try not to be fatigued at that. It's like my YouTube channel. I've made a video every Sunday for nine years. All right, I've not missed one. If I missed one, maybe people wouldn't come back. You'd be like, oh, that guy, I remember him. He didn't upload last Sunday, unsubscribed. We hang up phones, I'm a 90s kid. <laughs> now for me, once I level up a lesson to three crowns, I try to test out of level four and five. This is just because by that time, I find I pretty much know the content well enough and I treat those extra test out periods as a way to test myself to see do I actually know? Have I comprehended what was in this lesson? Because you can only get three mistakes and then you have to start over and that's very frustrating. Also as an added strategy, I know it can get incredibly tempting, but do not immediately start tapping bubbles and answering what you know and translating what you know before the reader has read out the entire sentence. I know, it's incredibly tempting, especially when you can see me gusta. You know what me gusta is. You don't want to know the rest of the sentence. You're too busy typing me gusta, but oh gosh. I didn't hear the rest of the sentence. So then you have to listen to the sentence a couple more times. In doing it that way, you're not really listening as well. You're not quite comprehending as much as you're just directly translating. So my big tip is just be a little bit more patient with the app and with yourself and just listen to the full sentence to get as much comprehension as possible before you actually go to tapping bubbles and translating things. It's like if in the middle of a conversation with someone, every time they say a couple words, you stop them to go like, hey, I know that word. I, I know that word, okay. Let me finish my story, come on. Also, as a pro tip, if you can, obviously not in your office or on your train commuting, unless you're into that. I have done it a couple times under my breath with my AirPods in. Read all the prompts out loud. After you hear it, read it out loud. Just saying every single correct answer and every single question and exercise really, really helps your comprehension, your speaking ability. So that is like one of my biggest tips if you actually wanna learn it. Otherwise, wow, you can hear it, you can understand it, you can read it, but you won't be able to pronounce anything. So just get a little bit of extra practice every time. Even if it doesn't ask you to say it, just say it. See it, say it, sort it. This usually works if you're on the underground, eh? Now I know it gets really frustrating when you get something wrong and you don't know why, but that's why I highly recommend tapping that little comments button. Go to check the forums and see other people frustrated and other people helping them out to tell them why it was wrong. Or as is the case a couple times when you get into more of the advanced ones, Duolingo just has a badly formatted English sentence. It's not a perfect app, like I said, so sometimes it gets really frustrating when it forces you to say things in a way that is not normal or for you Brits. It must be frustrating because a lot of it is American English. And so it gets a little frustrating in that regard, but always check the comments just to make sure and teach yourself, you know, why you're wrong so that way you can learn better. And one further tip before we move on to leagues is always make sure to type out and spell correctly the proper accents and such. You don't have to, Duolingo doesn't really care as much about punctuation, it'll still mark you as correct, but you don't wanna run the risk of incorrectly learning the language and then when you go to like type it out in the future, if, if you wanna take this seriously, you don't know the accents. Sure, you might know them in your head, but just type it out, you know? You, you wouldn't expect to, to talk in text chat like you're a 12 year old 90s kid. No, 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 no. Write a letter to your business, use the proper accents, all right? Just like I use my accent lights in the back. They're useless except for beauty. All right, so now that you know how to effectively learn a foreign language on Duolingo, take that information and throw it away. You don't need it for this chapter. <laughs> I'm hiding his eyes. Today we're talking about leagues, all right? How to win at leagues. Why would you even want to win at leagues, Evan? Isn't that just random people that I've been pitted up against like ranked multiplayer? I don't have to compete against them, don't lie to me. I know you're competitive, This you just can't help it, okay? You see those people and you're like, screw you, Brandon, your flex emoji, <laughs> I've gotten on top of you, hey. But if you want to effectively get up top, the best way of doing that is find yourself a times two multiplier. Now, there are a couple ways to get times two multipliers at this point. One, they're A-B testing early bird. Make sure you use Duo in the morning before noon and then come back in the afternoon and you get one. That's pretty effective. Uh, another method that they have is if you just complete a whole lesson without testing out, you'll get a times two multiplier for 15 minutes. And also, I believe for plus subscribers, there is an option if you go through all of your mistakes, all three different versions, then you also get a times two multiplier. After you get it, here is where 
it gets fun, all right? Now you're gonna go all the way up to the easiest lessons and you are going to try and get those to the purple, the level six, the purple legendary crown. In order to get legendary status in one of your lessons, you have to beat it four times without making more than two mistakes. And each one of those times, you get 40 to 45 experience. But at two times, you're getting 80 to 90 experience per go. When you have a 15 minute times two multiplier, you are going wild. Now I would recommend to save those unit one ones until the most most desperate of times in which you are trying to really spam to get to the top of the class, especially if you're doing the Diamond League and you just want to get that coveted trophy. The level one, oh, you've been in the top of the class at the end. If you want that, here's the strat. Get your times two and then spam those early lessons as fast as possible to get them to purple. It, honestly, in 15 minutes, I've gotten about 900 XP before. If you're wondering how people do it, there you go. That's actually the current meta. Also, as a little tip, if you want to make sure that you're in a league full of people that aren't tryhards, Try and finish on Monday night, like right before you lose your streak. Just do it then, and then you get lumped in with people that are just kind of trying to keep their streak. They're less try-hardy, and so you don't run the risk of having those 10,000 XP per week people in there as much. Now, in your league climbing journey, you'll go from bronze, silver, gold, sapphire, ruby, we got emerald, pearl, amethyst, onyx, and the coveted diamond place. But as of this video, there's now a new class above diamond. All you have to do to access the diamond tourney is not get kicked out of diamond. So you get into diamond, stay in the top 15 or so, and then you get put into the tourney. How do you win this tourney? Don't get kicked out for three weeks in a row. You basically have to win a third, a third, and a final third of a big diamond. And then at the end of the day, Evan, what do you get? What do you get for winning the diamond tourney? Well, you just, you don't get much, actually. It's a bit of a letdown. It's kind of like when you play one of those SNES games and as soon as you beat this very difficult game, it just says the end and you're like, that's it. That's it. This wasn't worth it. What? I'm trying to learn a language? No, I'm trying to get trophies. At this point, all you do is you tap on the little diamond thing on your app and it, it shows that you won. I want it in my avatar duo. I want to be able to flex that I, I know the current meta. <laughs> but hey, moving on from leagues, as I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, in my previous videos, I made a couple comments about whether or not it's best to use the app for mobile or desktop. And at that time, I did say desktop was far superior. The app was so different than the desktop experience. It was quite bizarre. They were kind of migrating things. And as of filming this video, I actually do think I use the app on my phone more often than I use the site. They have now joined up. Uh, everything is kind of very, very similar at this point in a good way. They no longer have like two different types of currency, lingots and gems. It's now just one type of currency, but there are some negatives with this. They did choose most of the UI for the mobile app, which makes sense in today's day and age, but uh, negatives, if you're doing some of the early exercises where you have to like tap bubbles to move words into sentences, on desktop, you cannot drag anymore. So like, let's just say you say, Gusta me la pizza. Oh no, I would like to switch Gusta and May, so it's May Gusta. You can't do that on desktop outside of removing everything and starting over. Very frustrating. So on at least on mobile, you can drag the words back and forth, which is convenient. I'm assuming this can be fixed easily but they haven't. Now I used to strongly recommend on desktop to just turn off the matching feature and type things out manually. I do think it's more difficult and easier to retain that knowledge. However, they've really done such a good job with developing this leveling system with the crowns that I actually don't do that as much anymore. I like that for the level zero, one, and two, you're basically translating Spanish to English progressively more difficultly. And then for those levels three, four, and five, you're now going the opposite direction. It does progressively get more difficult in a way that's intuitive. You know what's incredibly embarrassing? I even made a reference to my beautiful accent lights and didn't notice I forgot to turn them back on to save battery. There we go. How embarrassing. Now, speaking of turning other things on, Duolingo Plus turns me on? Oh God, I don't know where I was going with that. So back in the day, I remember saying that Duolingo Plus was a buggy mess that was not worth the money they were asking for. They tried to say you could download it like lessons and it would work offline, but it was rarely working for me and it just didn't really constitute the fee. Now they've added a huge amount of value to it and whether or not you think paying for Duolingo, a free language learning app is worth it, is really up to you at the end of the day. Do you value having no ads? Probably. Do you value being able to have a little test to see how your learning is going? Uh, just so you're aware, if you've never done one of these mastery tests that come with Plus, um, 
from my experience, I rarely get anything wrong on them. It tests like how well you've comprehended everything you've learned so far. And because I'm doing this cascading method, I pretty much do pretty good. It doesn't really say anything. It's like, you did it and you don't get enough experience for what it's worth, but eh, you know, it's, it's a fun little perk. And the real reason you get to change your Duolingo icon to a little duo with a space suit. That's it. Take my money, 10 pounds a month, just for the space suit. You do get a monthly streak freeze if that's something you're going to need and don't have enough gems to do that already. I have 100,000 gems. I don't really need that as a perk, but it's nice. I'd say the biggest perk of Plus is not having to constantly watch ads. That's just a nice thing to have. And also being able to do those purple legendary crowns testing out all the time or testing out of lessons without having to worry about it. So 10 pounds a month, depends if it's up to you. You can still learn for free, but I would say that it's actually quite good for me at least. Now for the people that have said negative things about Duolingo and how it doesn't really teach you languages in the right way for comprehension, the, the exercises are too translating. I do feel like people that have said that are people that have used the app for a couple days, maybe a month even, and they only see those basic intro lessons. And so they're like, wow, this is way too easy. But I encourage you to stick with it because the way that they've organized this, at least from my experience of the Spanish tree and the German tree, once you get to like unit six, it starts to get significantly more difficult. Those lessons are way less plug and play and way more longer sentences entire paragraphs in which you actually have to comprehend what they're saying. I remember in my Spanish class in high school, the teacher would put on the cassette, it would play audio, you'd have to listen to the whole thing and then answer a couple questions and two of the answers for the multiple choice would be so similar and both would be right, but one would be more right and it was so frustrating. Duo has those now. So now you can hate yourself <laughs> as an adult, you know, it's great. I feel like everything up to unit five, it did get a bit easy when it came to some of the multiple choice questions where one would be obviously the answer and two would be obviously not. But then when it comes to the comprehension where it reads you a whole story and if you'd be like, why was she upset? And you have to be able to not just translate words and not just pick a word out that you know, but understand. I think that's really important. So if you are someone that has gotten that far in the tree, please tell me if you've seen this as well. It gets difficult, okay? I like it. Also, just for some reason, if you are doubting my ability to speak German, well, I did make a video 100% in German with English subs. If you wanna watch that later on, put it to your watch later or something like that. Now, next topic, CEFR, the Common European Framework for Reference of Languages, which doesn't make sense. The L seems to be an incredibly important letter in this C-E-F-R-L language, it's, it's without the L. That aside, C-E-F-R, if you're unaware, is basically the A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2 framework in Europe for how well you know a language. And I remember about two years ago, and even last year, Duolingo was really promoting that they are trying to instill this framework into the app so that you'd get to a certain unit per se, and you'd be able to say, I'm an A2 learner, I'm a B2 learner, but, they have not really given much updates in regards to this, so I don't know how they are with it. I do know from progressing to the tree that these lessons are getting much more intricate. The sentences that I'm building are much more getting towards that A2 to B1 switchover, which is quite interesting, but they haven't really given us any updates, so I can't really tell you, oh, this will get you here. At the end of the day, I think it'd be a good idea for me to do a video where I'm taking an actual like a CEFR framework test you know, so subscribe for that. You know, that'll, that'll probably come uh, in the future. So we've been speaking a lot about the main meat of the app, the language tree. This is where you can really see your progression start to form. And for me, my goal is to, you know, one day get all the Spanish tree leveled up all the way. However, I would recommend to check out the stories segment. They've really beefed them up. They go from comically easy little stories to get you adjusted to uh, reading in a foreign language and get your confidence up to actual full on little stories. Like I read a four part story version of Puss in Boots. And I also read an Edgar Allan Poe short story. You know, the little, you know, you know that one? <laughs> what is it called? Nevermore. The Telltale Heart. I read that in Spanish. That's freaking sick. And I also got to test myself. If I didn't know a word, I could tap it. Amazing. So like the stories are actually getting really, really good in the app. And I do recommend you check them out, especially because it's the word of the day, comprehension. You really want to test that all the time. Now, I just want to pause the video real quick. Hello, Evan in the edit here. Uh, because as I'm recording this video, I've just realized 
Duolingo have removed all of those really nice advanced stories from the app, which is really, really upsetting. I believe it makes sense in terms of their brand. They're trying to only have their own IP with the little characters in there and their child-friendly stories. Uh, but removing these like real stories, like the Telltale Heart, like Puss in Boots, just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth, especially because this is something that Duo does all the time. They remove big features loved by the community and they don't communicate it. It sounds like YouTube in a way. Uh, so that is uh, just really troubling, especially because it makes sense they're trying to make it more kid friendly, but I know that I and many others learned stories like the Telltale Heart in school. So to be like, oh no, a guy gets murdered. Let's just, <sighs> I don't know if that's the reason. It does feel that way, you know, with all these different characters and things, they're trying to make it a little bit more kid friendly, which is fine, I guess, but I'm an adult that enjoys learning a language and hey, make an make an adult section on the website, Duo. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of, I don't know, saucy time languages. I, I'd like that, <laughs> not, not really, but some, some stories, why are you removing them? They were so good. Maybe they're gonna be putting them back, but they're not communicating it, and that's what upsets me. Also, as another quick gripe while I'm here this Sunday before you see this video, I have seen people complain about the new voices they've introduced, especially in German, supposedly. The voices are really annoying. Um, from my experience in the, in the Spanish voices, I'm happy they've added all these different character voices because that's real voices. Sure, Junior speaks like a child, which he is, and it's a bit annoying, and Oscar speaks way too slow for this two times brain, but I still think it's way better than the robot voices. So I'm a big fan of them innovating and adding stuff like that because I think that adds value. You might not like the characters, but at least they're humans. I like humans more than I like robots. Anyway, let, let's get back to the video. Just wanted to say that a little bit. Now, at one point, they had like three different lessons to do, like reading, listening, speaking, and I hated it. And I was ready to slate it. And they dialed it back to just, you do the lesson once, you do the little story once, and you read. And then the second time, it's conversational. So you speak, you listen. It's not as useful. I kind of hate that I have to do a story twice but I also appreciate that they're trying to get people to actually say things and also they'll take away the text. You have to just listen. That's really effective. Now, if you are learning one of the flagship languages, you'll get access to the audio lessons, which are basically like those ones I was talking about in which your teacher puts a cassette on and plays the audio of two Spanish people talking and then you have to decide what did they actually say. And they actually ask you to say things in the app. I find it pretty nice. It's a bit basic. There's a very beginnery, but then if you want to progress from that, they've got a full on podcast. So if you're using your hands, like cleaning up around the house or doing some admin and whatnot, it's a really useful tool to just slap on the Spanish podcast and be learning while you're working, if you're a productive aholic like me, so. Now, as much as I've been singing a lot of praises because it's been pretty effective for me, there are still pitfalls with the app. I've discussed a couple of the annoying little glitches there, but nothing is more infuriating than knowing you're correct about saying something, typing in the correct answer, and then being told, no, we want you to say it in a way that's not normal. I hate it so much, but you know, whenever that happens, I do have to remind myself, it is a free app that I'm paying for with Duolingo Plus, but every time I see one of these errors, I highly recommend you do the same thing. Just report it, report it and say my answer should be accepted. And if you're like me, you wait six months, you keep doing the same lesson and you still get marked wrong. And then eventually someone comes along and fixes it. And hey, the future generation of users can benefit from your snarky little reports. <laughs> Duolingo isn't the end all be all of learning. And so if you're just using Duolingo and nothing else, maybe it won't be as effective as if you could be watching a TV series, reading a book, uh, taking in other forms of media. But that makes a lot of sense. You're not going to be a good chef just by reading recipes. You need to start using it a bit more. Cook for your friends. Speak Spanish to your friends. I speak Spanish to my girlfriend all the time. She doesn't know what I'm saying, but I say it anyway, all right? I same with my German. She's gonna have to learn eventually. She's gonna get it from me. Okay, I'm her owl. And uh, if you're someone like me that you know likes learning these languages, hey, subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every Sunday. Also, I've got this video you can watch if you'd like. I made a video about if English was like German. I did two of those actually. They're quite funny. Other than that, hopefully I'll see you here next Sunday. Thank you so much for uh, being interested in what I'm interested in. I'll see you here next week. Goodbye.